tonight or first thing in the morning, I will send each of you a link to that uh, archive, and you can share that with as many people as you like. Um, so I see um, almost everyone on the call I've already uh, I've had on a webinar before. Um, tonight's webinar uh, is, I'm going to skip ahead here to the next slide, is uh, all about a new title, or it's a relatively new title called O Generator World Music, and it has been out uh, now for a couple of uh, months in Great Britain, and we have um, been lucky enough to become the exclusive reseller here in the United States. Um, so if you are uh, at all interested in world music, this is an absolutely ideal uh, software title. It is $79 for a single copy, but you can also get lab pack and, um, and, and site license pricing, pricing, actually, which brings it down quite a bit. Uh, the software is really intended for 11 to 17-year-olds. That's what they put on the packaging, but that's in Great Britain. Um, I personally think that you can use this easily with kids in third and fourth grade and certainly up into uh, through the end of high school. And even into college, it's a really fun piece of software. Now, some of you may have been on my webinar uh, two or three weeks ago when I talked about O Generator learning to compose. If you were on that webinar, then quite a few of the things that you're going to see today are very similar. Uh, but the content, uh, learning to compose, is all about going step by step, taking kids through composing a pop tune. Uh, in this uh, title that we're going to be looking at tonight, it's all focused completely on African and Latin um, rhythms and creating music in the African and Latin style. Um, if at any time you have a question, there is or should be in the lower left corner of your participant window, which is on the right side of your screen, a little raise your hand button. Uh, the only way I will know that you have a question is by clicking on that, and uh, when you do, I'll be happy to unmute your phone line. And for those of you that have been on these calls before, you know that the only reason I muted is to cut out on uh, background noise, babies uh, crying and dogs barking and the like. Uh, so it's nothing personal. All right, so we're going to move ahead and go over um, – oh, I forgot to mention. If you go to soundtree.com slash online courses, I'll be putting up this, uh, this um, PowerPoint presentation as well as uh, other links that we talk about uh, also later tonight. So soundtree.com slash online courses. So tonight's overview uh, is we're going to first uh, talk about what O Generator World Music is. Then we're going to take a tour of the software, and this software is different than uh, Learning to Compose in that there's two completely separate programs included uh, in the software. Uh, we are going to look at learning world music, and we're going to look at uh, playing world music. Uh, and then we're going to go through the process of creating our own tune, I'll play you some examples uh, that have already been created by the folks at O-Generator, and then talk about some export options and the kind of things you can do once you're finished uh, in the software. What can you do with it? Um, but it's really, um, I think you're going to find this to be a very unique piece of software, perfect for the non-traditional music student as well as those who are uh, traditional. So uh, what is world uh, O-Generator world music? So what I'm going to do now is... Um, share with you my desktop, and it's actually pretty clean in comparison to other um, times I've shown it. And I'm going to go straight to our uh, – Soundtree now has a, uh, a YouTube channel. Um, and if you go to soundtree.com slash soundtree videos, hopefully by now you will see uh, that I have up um, here um, some videos, and there's lots of tutorials. These two videos – are all about how uh, O Generator learning to compose works. I would um, urge you to check these out if you have not before. So again, that's at youtube.com slash soundtree videos. Um, but what I'm going to do now is take you to the uh, o, Generator o Generator website, which is at o-music.tv. And if you go here, there's a whole um, little how it works, and you can check this out yourself. I do not believe there is a uh, demo of the software, but this is o-music.tv is where you can find out how it works, and here's a little video um, to show you. This is the O-Generator. Here are your instruments. Volume controls. Start button. Tempo buttons. Bars. Well, I could do a better job of showing you the software than that, so I'm going to stop there. But you can you can check out um, 
this website. It's pretty cool, and there's a lot of other uh, tutorials and things that you can do here. But now what I'll do is go back into um, my desktop. And my uh, my overall impression of this, how would you use this and what is it, before I actually show you the software, um, it is the absolute perfect title uh, to get kids not only learning about African and Latin music specifically, um, but also um, playing, um, creating music in that style, and and finally playing. And what uh, the O Generator folks do, and you'll see some videos in a few minutes, um, they actually want students to play real percussion instruments uh, and play along with the software. Uh, and the best, in my opinion, the best teaching situation you can have is having some kind of interactive whiteboard up at the front of your classroom, a decent sound system, a laptop running the software, and uh, you have the perfect one computer classroom where the students could be holding um, you know, appropriate percussion instruments in their hands. They can come up to the interactive whiteboard like a smart board or a Promethean and actually interface with the software directly by touching on the uh, interactive whiteboard. Um, but I probably would be best off by letting the software do its own uh, show. So I'm going to now go down, and there are two choices. Uh, there's learning world music and playing world music. So we're going to start with the learning world music. And um, while this starts up, you're going to hear this really cool little Latin music. So O Generator starts up. That's a fun thing to have play in your classroom for sure. And you'll see that, again, this is the, there are two parts to the software, learn world music and play African and Latin rhythms or play music. So the first thing they want you to do when you go into the learn world music is click on this video to watch. The recording studio is where musicians produce their music. In modern day music, the equipment that records for music is called a sequencer. We've produced our own pre-sequencer, which will allow you to produce your own music. And more importantly, it will help you understand how different styles are put together. It's called the O Generator. Whatever styles you're into, hip-hop, rock, R&B, you'll be able to explore how music is created. Now, there are two ways in which you can use the O Generator. You can create your own tune, or you can learn about music through using our own instructor. Let's select Create Your Own Tune. All right, well, I'm, being, I'm the one being paid to do this, so I'm going to um, um, go straight into the – I'll show it to you myself. That's what I'll do. Um, so in the Learn World Music, there are, first of all, the first thing I'd like to show you is the Teacher Lesson Guide, which is all the way at the bottom. And it says uh, the On-Screen Lesson and Curriculum Guide. And when you click on this, these are all um, lesson plans and handouts that are pre-made, ready to go. So it says Lessons. And when you click on these lessons, um, you have three, uh, a two African and a Latin rhythm here, then Latin, Latin, African, and Latin. Let's do a simple one with African and Latin drumming. And what this does is takes you step by step through the actual lesson, what we will learn how to create African and Latin rhythms. Now if I click on next, and by the way, I'm going to sh I'll bring up my highlighter pen. The navigation is down here for back and next. And when I click on next, it brings me to a video. The bongo. These are two drums attached to one another. They're played in all genres of music, but originate from Latin America. They're played by using a combination of fingers and thumbs. There are different tones. So what I think is great about this is that you have videos of somebody actually playing the real instruments. Um, I think that's pretty hip, so we'll, we'll play a little more of it. Here's one tone. Here's a lower tone using your thumb. So you can combine the two different tones. go to the next one, and you can go through all of these um, one by one. So here is, let's see, complete the lesson quiz and then move on to the apply section. So I don't think we saw everything we wanted to. Hold on. The conga drums, they're heard in all styles of music, but in particular Latin American music. They're two large wooden shells with two different tones. 
playing the conga is a combination of using different areas of the hand. Okay, so you get the idea it's very similar to the last one, and then you have um, a typical um, conga beat, which is right here, um, uh, shown to you. And I'll get it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm doing an absolutely bang-up job so far of, of showing this to you, but uh, these are the lessons. Let me go back to the teacher menu. Uh, in, in the lessons, I'll show you an advanced one. Let's go to the, the two, th two over three Latin clave rhythm. So here we go again, navigating through it by clicking on the next button. Um, it says what we will learn, what the rhythm is. We will create a Latin bass line, and we will create a simple piano melody. Next, it takes you through the videos, just like uh, the other one. And then it shows you exactly what the diagram will look like. So it's almost your teacher's key um, to uh, what you're going to end up with. And then there's a quiz at the end. So this is, again, only for teachers, not for the students. It's kind of giving you an idea of what you're going to be doing. And there's also, this is kind of cool, uh, this is for students if they would like to create their own O-generator patterns. And I, I will show you how they do that. Um, they can write them down. So this is all printable um, files. You just click on the print button, which is right up here in the top right corner. You click on print and photocopy to your heart's content, hand that out to your students for them to make these little patterns. And again, if you've never seen this before, I'll explain what that does. Um, obviously, you heard uh, Marcel Pusey, who's the narrator and the originator of the software of all the videos. It's a British product, um, but they have created a USA curriculum for us. And what that does is shows you what are the MENC standards that each lesson um, fulfills. And that's really kind of handy for those of you who have administrators who always want to know what, what standard is being addressed. So that's the uh, teacher guide. I'm going to come back to the main menu, and I'm going to stop for a moment to see if there are any questions. Any questions at all? And hello, Wayne. I'm glad you were able to join us. I, uh, um, I Glad you got the web link. All right, so I'm going to now go back to my desktop. It seems as though no one has a question. Um, again, that's the teacher lesson guide that we skipped to. Now we're going to go up to the O instructor lessons. And again, we're in the learn world music aspect. So the O instructor lessons, when I click on them, this is very similar to what happened in learning to compose. There are seven different lesson plans. Um, there are three simples and four advanced that go directly with those uh, the teacher lesson guide that I just showed you, but these are the actual lessons that you can take the kids through. So let's go to the African and Latin drumming, learning drumming. And when I click on this, it actually lets me listen to all the different instruments, and you can mouse over these. And if you click on it, you hear each instrument. And what I'm doing is clicking on it. Now, if you had an interactive whiteboard, the kids could come up and click directly with their finger on any of these instruments to hear this. And then there's all the percussion instruments. So what they're doing is telling you that in this lesson we're going to be using all these different timbres. And I have to tell you that the students, in my opinion, if I'm sorry I never had this in an interactive whiteboard environment, I'm sure they would absolutely love coming up and touching these to hear what the instruments sound like. So I'm going to click on Continue Lesson, which is down here. So after they introduce what instruments are in the lesson, you go to Continue to Lesson. And here's what happens. It launches the O Generator interface. And for those of you who have never seen this before, um, this up here at 12 o'clock is uh, the first beat of a measure. And then each circle represents a 16th note. So therefore, if you were to count them all up, there are 16 circles. So this is one measure. 16 16th notes. So when I press on play, you can hear that I'm going to get a click on 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. One, so, obviously, in that little example I played, it's, he's recorded himself uh, sampled 1, 2, 3, 4. But what you might notice on the screen is that at the very bottom, there's this little thing saying continue, continue. And what these lessons are, they're either self-guided, the students could do this one at a time in a lab environment, or you can have them come up to the board and click on continue when you're ready. Before I do that, I just want to show you some other things about the interface before we get into the lesson. You have four rings. There's an outer ring and then three inner rings. Each one of these rings is colored, and so the first ring is blue. What that blue ring represents is a drum kit, and what that's shown 
by is over here on the right-hand side of the screen. There is a blue circle, which means drum kit. That means that in those blue circles, you can select from different drum sounds. So let me show you how to do that. You go straight to the circle, and when you see when I mouse over, on the right-hand side of the circle, my mouse points down. And when I move my mouse to the left side of the circle, the mouse points up. And what that means is when I start clicking, I can go through all of the different sounds that are contained in that drum kit, which you saw on the first screen. So I'm going to click up. And what it said, when I clicked up once, I got a bass drum. So I'm going to click up on bass, on beats one, two, three, and four, just so you can hear what, what happens. When I press play, which is, these are the tape controls over here, here's what I get. And now while it's playing, I can add different instruments. So you get it. Now I've got an absolutely square beat going, and I can stop it by using these play controls on the on the right hand lower corner of the screen. Now what I'm going to do is get rid of all this stuff, and you can either go up or down. And when you go down to blank, that's how you have no sound. It's kind of like you would maybe think of mute. Um, so there are no there's no place where it shows you what the um, or at least that I know of. There's no like list of what every instrument is. I just usually click right through them and see all the different instruments that I have available to me. But it looks to me like there's about eight in each one. So the first circle is drums. The second one, if we look up here on the right-hand side of the screen, it says is percussion. So that's typically your cymbals and your claves and uh, shakers. The third ring, the green one, is percussion too. So there must be some other kind of um, specific Latin and African-sounding instruments, like a cuica, for example, or a uh, guiro. And then the outer circle on this one is a counter. On the upper left-hand corner, just to show you up here, this is where all of your file menu kind of options are. Saving a tune, naming the tune, recording a tune, exporting your tune as notation, which uh, is really an, an excellent thing that it can do. And it can you can export the notation um, straight into Sibelius, which is pretty hip. There's a help menu and a print menu, and you can print out um, the uh, circle when you're all done. Just to give you the last bit of the tour before we get into it, right and left hand side you have a pan, so uh, this is color coordinated. The outer side you can either pan it all the way to your left speaker or your right speaker, keep it right in the middle. Or on the right hand side this is your volume, it's like a mixer. If you want the, the counter volume to be really loud, you just bring it all the way to the right and it's very loud. So that's pretty easy. And then in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you have your copy and paste functions, which I think we'll get to a little bit later. Uh, but this is your, you can copy and paste what you have in this. By the way, this circle right here represents the first measure. And if you look all along the bottom of the screen, and let me see if I can point this out with my uh, pointer. If you look all along the bottom of the screen, you'll see a, a line of circles. Um, that is purely, those. each one of those represents one measure. So when I click on uh, measure number two, watch what happens. Let's see. Let's see if I can do it. There. In measure number two, I have a completely blank measure. And the way I do that is I click on the measure first, and then I unclick the previous measure, and now I've got measure three. So I want to go back to measure one, and there's my little counter. So that's the navigation. Uh, and again, you have to think rather than left to right in a measure, or like you would in GarageBand or MixCraft or Pro Tools or anything, now you're thinking circular, and that's where the word O generator comes from. You're generating music out of the circle. I'm going to stop here for a second to see if you have any questions about the navigation or the interface. Any questions at all? Oh, right. I must be doing a good job of explaining how it works, or you've seen this before. Um, I am now going to follow through one of these lessons and finally put the software out of its misery and click on Continue. Again, to review, I'm in the, uh, the O Instructor uh, lessons. And when I click on Continue, here's what I get. There are many types of African and Latin drums, but different tones lend a certain feel and color to the music. A tone is just a different type of sound. We're going to explore bongos, congas, toms, and explore how you can set up a rhythmic pattern in a typical African style using these different tones. Firstly, set the tempo at 115. Do this by going to the tempo button in the right-hand corner at the bottom of your screen. All right, so it's telling you, you know, 
it's a self-guided lesson. Again, you can do this either with an entire class or have the students do it by themselves. To create a lively pace. To get a rhythm, it's important to set up a pulse to work with. You can do this by setting up four beats to the bar. Press play. So now it's telling me to press play, and I do that, and we get our counter. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now I can click continue. You can see in here where the counter is playing four beats to the bar. Pause the music. We're going to work in the percussion circle. Let's set up a pulse using closed hi-hats. Go to tab one of the percussion circle and click up to hi-hat C. So percussion circle is red, and it says click up to hi-hat C. And there we go. And click continue. Do the same on pad 5. Pad 9. And pad 13. Close hi-hat is now playing four beats to the bar. You can count in time with the hi-hat pattern. You can count one, two, three, four. Press play. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Go to the top right-hand corner and turn off the counter instrument. One, two. The way to turn off the counter instrument is actually by clicking on this little tiny white circle here. So let's set up a bongo pattern around the pulse. We're going to be working in the drum kit circle, the inner blue circle. Go to pad one of the drum kit and click down to bongo L. This is a low bongo, so put bongo L on pad five. The low bongo is playing on beats one and two. Press play. Pause the music. So the rhythm is straight because you're playing on the strong beats. Pad 1 is beat 1, and pad 5 is beat 2 in the bar. The key to African and Latin rhythms is something called syncopation. Syncopation is where you play in between the beats. So let's play in between the beats. Go to pad 3 and click down to bongo H. This is a high bongo. Put bongo L on pad 8. Bongo L on pad 11. These pads, pads 3, 8, and 11, are playing in between the beats. Look where the hi-hats are. You are now playing a syncopated rhythm. Listen to the effect it has on the rhythm. Press play. Pause the music. So you can hear and see how the rhythm starts becoming more interesting by playing in between the rhythm, syncopating the rhythm. Let's add in some different tones. The high bongo helps make the rhythm more dynamic. It's a different tone. So let's put in more variation in color by adding in a different type of drum. Go to pad four of the drum kit and click down to conga H. This is a high conga. Put a high conga on pad seven. Listen to the rhythm without the hi-hats. Turn off the percussion instrument for a moment. Press play. Pause the music. The high conga is a different sound. It has a high tone. It can almost be used like a rhythmic melody. So it's a good thing to try creating a rhythmic melody or motive using the bongos or congas or tom sounds. A motive is a short tune or musical phrase. So let's continue. Put the percussion instrument back on. Put a high bongo on pad 10. Tom H on pad 14. Put Tom L on pad 15. Listen to the effect of these different tones being added. Press play. Pause the music. So, as well as adding in different tones, you're putting more into the bar. 
it makes it feel like the music's increasing in momentum. Okay, let's add in some more colour. We're going to add in some different sounding instruments. Turn off the hi-hat C on pad 1. You do this by clicking on the small dot at the bottom of the pad. So I'm going to, hopefully you're enjoying this. Um, I am now, by the way, when you, I messed up. When you click on that little white circle, it actually deletes the entire circle. To make it muted, you just click on this circle. And then to bring it back, you click on it again. The little guy deletes it, so I messed up. So let's continue with the lesson. I just want to take you through one of them. I'm not going to do this over and over. Now do the same on path 5, 9, and 13. The percussion circle should be clear now. Go to path 13 and click up to woodblock H. Woodblock, whistle. Come on. There we go. Oh, hooray. This is the high woodblock. Put a high woodblock on pad three. And pad 16. Listen to the effect of adding in a rhythm with the high woodblock. Press play. the music. So the woodblock is the dominant rhythm. It's the highest pitch of all the percussion that stands out. By pitch we mean the note. We're going to create a musical conversation with the woodblock. Go to pad 5 of percussion and click up to the cowbell. Put a cowbell on pad 7. Listen to the effect of how it replies to the high wood block. Press play. Pause the music. So it adds a different rhythmic melody. To complete the rhythm, go to pad 11 of percussion and click up to rotor tom H. Listen really carefully. The pattern descends in pitch from the rotor tom as it goes down. Press play. Pause the music. Could you hear it? It went from high to low. So that's the idea. Use different drums with different tones, leave gaps, play in between the beat to get interesting patterns, then create a rhythmic melody on top. That's the end of the lesson. Let's see how much you've learned. Click on the quiz button. So now, at the end of every single lesson, there is a quiz, and it's right here in this bottom right-hand corner. And when I click on Lesson Quiz, it brings up, um, it's asking me, do I want it to save that? And here is the quiz. What continent is the orange one? So the students can click on it. Hopefully, they'll get that one right. Of course, now I can't, there's, um, I'm having an issue, because there should be a question right here. So I'm going to click uh uh, how fast and how slow. Great. So we're having a small issue with the questions not showing up. So this isn't really going to help if I show you the quiz. But what the, the intent is to take the kids all the way through a lesson, again, step by step. And, it, you know, for us as music educators, we might seem um, absolutely crazy to go that slowly. But I think it's perfectly sequenced uh, to get the kids understanding and slowly building these rhythms. I'm going to stop here to see if there are any questions as I've gone for about 15 minutes without asking so far, it feels like. Any questions so far on what you've seen? Again, if you have one, you can either text it to me using uh, the text tool underneath the participant window, or you can raise your hand, the little icon right below the participant window. All right, then I'm going to continue, go back into my desktop. Um, and I, I think at this point, I don't need to take you through any more lessons, um, but you do see that in this instructor lessons, you've got seven units, basically. African and Latin drumming is kind of an introduction. Then there's uh, African voices, uh, clave rhythms for a sukus, or suku, I guess I don't know how to pronounce that. That's terrible. Uh, then a two over three Latin clave rhythm 
the samba, African chords, and then a salsa. Um, so I really like the fact that they've thought about, and this is this O Generator world music is specifically written for educators and students how to learn, you know, learning how these um, instruments and these rhythms are built. Uh, and it's pretty pretty cool. Now what I'd like to do is go to the next section here, which is load a song. We're not going to do that because I don't have any uh, pre-made ones, but if the kids have saved their work, you can use the load a song. I'll just click on it, and it'll open up, um, you know, any of the songs that you had in here. Of course, now it's going to probably, yeah, there you go. I do not have any songs, I'm sorry to tell you. Um, and let's go to create your own tune. And so when I click on that, I get a blank um, and it's basically saying, well, what instruments do you want? Uh, what kind of percussion? Simple, intermediate, or advanced? Let's do drum kit and African vocals. Then it says, well, what instrument? What kind of uh, melodic instrument? Pick one. And I'll say um, a marimba. And then it says, pick another instrument, and I'm going to say bass. And then um, I can click continue, and I have a blank O generator um, template, which you should see about now. So now I've got my O generator world music, and what I can do is go in here, and um, I'm going to apply some of the stuff that uh, Marcel told me um, to do. Uh, and let's hear what that sounds like. And I can, this is, for me, the best way to use O generator is clicking on play and letting it loop and adding to that loop. So here we go. And now I could just add to the outer circles. All right, so you can see that I could probably spend hours and hours, and you can too. This is a lot of fun. So the way that you could use this again in a classroom situation is either in a one cla in a one computer with a smart board or Promethean or other interactive whiteboard up at the front. You can have the kids come up and play um, using this O generator format. And then just to let you know, uh, just so I make sure that I cover everything here, um, when you're all done and you love this first measure. Uh, earlier I mentioned that you can do copy and paste. So what I can do is say, you know what, I would like to copy um, the bar. I'd like to copy this entire bar, and then I'm going to go into measure two. And in measure two, I would like to paste everything. So now I've got, in measure one, I've got that rhythm, and in measure two I do. So now when I press play, you'll see that it'll scroll back and forth, or loop between measures one and two. So here we go. What I can do is, uh, you know, make some changes here. I can say, you know what, I don't like really the way that sounded. Um, and in measure two, I'm going to say, I'm going to take some of the bass out and make it a little bit different um, and take away these voices. And so now I have an A-B pattern. And again, using that, um, the, um, this measure tool, copy and paste. So now here's measure one and two. Let's listen to it now. So 
So you see that you can do, that that's how to copy and paste entire measures. If you wanted to, though, you can keep that drum kit copied. So you copy the drum kit. Let's see if I can turn that off. Copy the drum kit. And when I go here into uh, measure three, and you have to unclick measures one and two, I can actually just paste the drum kit part in and then build from there. So if you like the rhythm that you made in measure one and you want to keep that rhythm constant and have the music change on the outside, that's the way to do it. You have your copy paste. It's a little bit, you know, there's no file menu. You don't go up to the top and say, where's my file, copy, file, paste, or, you know, select, copy, select, paste. You do all of that here in this copy, paste. But you can make an entire uh, composition, and you have up to 64 measures, because the top row of zeros, or O's, I should say, is 32 of them. And then you have a row underneath it. So you can have up to 64 measures, and that's a pretty decent amount. Um, uh, to start. And you can also have your metronome on um, and have like a, a metronome in the back clicking. So let's see what that sounds like. You can hear the metronome in the back. That's pretty cool. And if you want to start all over at the beginning or if you want, right now my playhead is at like 5.30. That's the bar restart. It starts at the very beginning. Um, so any questions on this, creating your own music? So I'm going to go back into the meeting center to see if anyone has any questions so far. Okay. Uh, it, it seems to me like um, this is pretty – oh, there's a question. So, Laura, I'm going to unmute you. Laura, go ahead. If you, uh, when you save it, you would save it here in this program, or you would take it, say, to Sibelius and save it as a file there? Excellent question. So I'm going to, um, the, I would have mute you and go right back into the software. Question is, how do you get this out of O generator? What do you do with it? So in this upper right, hand, upper left hand corner, excuse me, whole bunch of things you can do. First thing we're going to do is save it. I always like to make sure, yes, I want to save this as a new tune, and I'm going to call this uh, webinar, uh, and I'm going to make sure I save this to my desktop, and I'm going to click save. So I have, and by the way, it's an OGD, so O generator um, file. I don't know what the D stands for. So I've saved my piece. Hooray, it was saved. So now I'm going to go back into my piece, and I am going to say um, export notation. So let's do that. When I click export notation, uh, it is, let's see what it, this is interesting. I'm really looking forward to seeing what file format it's going to do it in. So I'm going to say webinar uh, notation and click save. All right, let's see what happens when I open that. Um, by the way, the, the record tune, you can click record, watch what happens. And it converts the entire piece, uh, however long it is, into, I believe it's an MP3. It might be uh, an A for a WAV file, but let me see, webinar audio. So we're going to go back to my desktop and see what that did. So exporting notation and recording a tune. Recording a tune is, again, converting this O to an audio file. Exporting notation, I cannot wait to see what it does. Um, but those are your options. So saving it, saving it as an O generator file, um, saving it as a new name. So if you were working in one and want to save it as a different name, um, recording it, exporting it, and printing it, by the way, would be how you'd print this out as a, uh, as a just a PDF kind of option. So what I'm going to do now is quit out of this because there is another software program, believe it or not, for me to show you. I'm going to uh, hide that. And let's see. Oh, there it is. So the webinar audio, my, um, my file came out as an AIF file, so audio interchange file format. That's the Apple version. If you were on a uh, PC, um, it would show up as a uh, .wave file then. So that's the full audio. You'll notice that from a notation standpoint, it has saved it as an XML file. Now, for those of you that know Sibelius and Finale, Finale has absolutely no problem opening up XML files. Sibelius needs a plugin. I believe it's called the Dolit uh, plugin to be able to open an XML file. But what that means is you can open that uh, purely straight up in Finale, and with a little help, uh, you can do it in Sibelius. Unless anyone on the webinar knows another way of opening XML files into Sibelius. 
Uh, but that's what we did here was, um, you know, we ended up, you can either end up with an O-generator file, which is uh, this one right here. Let's see, I, I did see it. There it is. There's my O-generator file. There's my notation file as an XML file, and there's my uh, file as an audio. So that's a lot of export options for a little uh, little software program, which is pretty cool. Um, any questions before I uh, move on to the play music, which right now we've only focused on learning world music. I have some time left to show you playing world music. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go back into sharing you with you my desktop. I'm going to go into my dock, and there is play world music. So it, this is similar. In fact, so, um, you know, the first time I looked at play music, I said, how is this any different? So we'll let it go through its cool little Latin percussion thing. So when you open up play world music, you see that there are three options only instead of like the seven or eight that were there before, the teaching resources. This is a... Um, a really cool little video on um, how to use O Generator play music with your students. Playing World Rhythms. This is how to run a lesson. To prepare a lesson, use your teacher's guidebook. It provides advice and resources required, the lesson objectives, and lesson suggestions. Make sure the percussion is on hand before the lesson. Simply place the class in front of the projector. Choose your lesson from the Playing World Rhythms lesson menu. There are videos that demonstrate the different techniques on how to play a range of percussive instruments. Use O Instructor, the audio guide at the bottom of your screen. Click on the continue button each time it flashes, and this will take you step by step through the lesson. The class simply follow the instructions. You can view any of the rhythms the students are asked to play in traditional notation by clicking on the Score View button. Or you can export the specific rhythm played into a notation package such as Sibelius using the Export Notation button. When using O-Generator Playing World Rhythms, you can enhance the enjoyment by splitting the class into different playing groups. Get the groups to play four bars on their own, coming in and out on time. It helps make the exercises fun and challenging. Or, mute instrument. While O generator is playing, you can click on the instrument you wish to mute, then bring it back in after a few bars. The challenge is to see whether they can stay in time when they can't see their own rhythm. Play along. Get instrumentalists to accompany the music and rhythms whilst the rest of the class play percussion. Use the soundtrack. Use the soundtrack for extra challenges to play along to. Revisit. Return to the lessons. These lessons should be revisited since rhythm is all about practice, practice, practice. Enjoy the hands-on experience of playing live percussion with O Generator playing world rhythms. So what I really like about their approach is they're saying, all right, if they've played... Oh, let me go back here. What I like about the approach is rather than, I mean, what kind of experience would it be for the uh, students that they're only dabbling into world music rhythms would be to be clicking on a mouse. Um, so I really like the fact that they thought it through and made really a separate um, uh, software program that has the students actually using that kind of uh, smart board uh, set, uh, atmosphere uh, for them to actually play it on real uh, percussion instruments, which is fantastic. Uh, two quick things to show you in here before I wrap up is that there's a how to play the instruments. And what this is really cool for, and this might be the $79 makes the whole thing worth it, is that every one of these instruments has a video uh, that shows you exactly what's the proper technique for playing. So I'm going to go to the shikere. The shikere is an African shaker made from a gourd and covered in beads. To play it, you can play it into your hand like this. Or you can shake it like this. So each one of these instruments has a video. And I know that seems absurd, you know, that you show a 10-second video, but showing proper playing technique 
uh, for me as a music educator who never really had any formal world music training, uh, this is great, and it's really good for showing the students. So there you have your uh, 15 little videos. Then there are lessons, and what these lessons are meant for is for the students to be sitting in their chairs with instruments looking up, and he takes you through each one of these um, uh, types of music. So let's go to a samba, a go-go rhythm. When I click on that, uh, it shows you all the instruments that are going to be included. Video. If you click on it, you get the video, but we can go continue to lesson, and this should look just like the learning world music did before, um, where you have uh, the blink and continue. So let's just take a little bit of this. I won't make you go through the whole thing. Samba is a famous Brazilian rhythm, and it's instantly recognizable for the go-go rhythm. That's what we're about to learn. Look out for the Montuno-type piano line that plays with the rhythm. Hopefully you've checked out the How to Play Instrument video. You should be in four groups, the Cowbell group, the Shaker group, the Woodblock group, and the Agogo group. Click Continue. Group 1, the Cowbells. Your rhythm's first. You're following the outside yellow circle. The Cowbell is essential for locking the rhythm down. You're playing four beats to the bar. Be precise. Press Play. Group two, the shakers. This is a tough rhythm. The shakers are playing on the off beats. You're following the inside red circle. It's difficult because it's hard to repeat this rhythm over and over again. It's easy also to get confused. So if you're struggling, turn the piano off or slow the tempo down. Good luck. Press play. Combining the cowbell and shakers. The cowbell and shaker rhythms will play together now. Notice how the cowbell is on the beat and the shakers are playing on the offbeat. The effect is fantastic. It's a tricky one to lock down and to keep going. Start with the cowbells only. Turn off the piano and shaker circle. Then after a while, turn the shakers on and then add in the piano. Listen to how the music develops. Press play. You get the idea. It's taking. You've got the main rhythm. It's taking the students. Uh, hold on, let me pause it here. There we go. It's taking the students step by step through slowly building these complex samba rhythms. Um, and I just think he's got a fantastic approach uh, to doing it. Um, is it for you know, for the non-traditional music student? This is this does not require them to read quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth uh, notes, and all the rest. They're looking really at this clock uh, style interface. So it's very, very different than the traditional thing that you might be used to. Um, and, it, you know, to be honest, it might not be for everybody, uh, but I think it's a great approach. Um, I'm also going to show you under the um, teaching resources, they have all of these printable uh, rhythm sheets, which I think is great. So I can go into the Samba, a go-go rhythm, click on it, and what you get, and this is, again, it's printable, um, you can print it out in notation so that the kids can see it. Um, and I really like the fact that they've done that. These are all, again, they're PDF files that you just click on the print button and you're good to go. So I'm going to stop the meeting here and see if there are any questions so far on what I've shown you. All right, so Laura, excellent. Uh, you're on. Okay, just just a comment. I, I saw that there's a tempo um, bar down at the bottom also, so for younger students, or groups that really doesn't get the tempo quite at whatever they set it at, uh, as a default, you can slow it down, I assume? Yeah, let's, um, I will try that for you. Uh, but first, I'll answer Marie's question, but I will try doing this. I'm, I'm sure you can. But. Okay. All right, Marie has a question, and you are on. Go ahead. Thank you. I came late, so you may have answered this already. I like these teaching packages at the end here. My question is, do I have to pay a whole separate program for that, or is it 
included? No, this is all well included in the software. So the software, at, at, at the very beginning, um, what you get with World Music is really two complete programs. One's called Learn World Music, and the other is Play World Music. Uh, and they come with all that curriculum and lesson plans. Uh, and it's only $79 uh, for one copy, but there are lab pack and site license pricing available. Okay, thank you. So it's all, it's, it's really a, um, um, you know, a, a, a whole complete world music curriculum for 79 bucks, which I think is pretty cool. Sure, thank you. All right, so I'm going to now, and I see that Wendy, uh, Wendy uh, Bloom said that she really likes the software for drum circle lessons, and I think that's a fantastic uh, idea, Wendy, where you could have your students playing in a drum circle and using this uh, circle interface. But I'm going to go back to Laura's uh, question, which is with the tempo. So when I go back in and share um, to my desktop, let's see if I can go back in here to the main menu and go on the lessons. And we're going to go back. Let's try a different one for a second. We're going to go to Samba 2 and continue to the lesson. What you can do is when I press play, uh, Laura's question was at the bottom right here. I'll, let me circle it so you can see it on the screen. There's a tempo. Right? And when I click on the minus, I am able to slow it down, although slowly. I'm clicking my mouse pretty feverishly, but it is slowing down, as you can see. And that's a great little tool. So like Laura um, said, if your students are having a difficulty or having difficulties playing a rhythm at a certain tempo, that's a great way to slow it down and make it a little bit easier for them. One thing that I didn't mention at all, and it's only in this thing, is that right over here on the right left-hand side of the screen, it says classic urban jungle bright lights party purple and black and white. Um, just so you're aware, you can actually customize the way it looks. If you click on classic, it is the blue background, and if you click on Urban Jungle, it's kind of this green thing. This is, ugh, that's uh, bright lights. That's kind of painful. There's Party Purple, which I'm sure a lot of kids would like, and then Black and White. So just so you're aware, and then I didn't skip anything. That's uh, how to customize the way the, uh, the, way the interface looks. I'm going to go back into the um, meeting center to see if there are any other questions uh, before we call it a day. All right, so what I'm going to do is just, and I think I got through all of these things. Uh, I didn't I didn't play you the examples, but I think you get the, uh, actually, why don't we do that? Um, I'm going to go in here just for just to give you one um, quick uh, here. Let's go to, uh, oh, it's in the, uh, you know what, folks? It's in the other program. It's in Learn World Music, which means I have to quit this and open up. But just so you're aware, they have about 16 different representative examples of a samba, uh, of a salsa, and you can play that, and you can see the way it's written in the O Generator interface. But that's in the Learn World Music part, and uh, that's why, if you don't mind, I'm going to skip it now because uh, it means quitting this and opening up the other one. Um, and we talked about export options, so again, you can export it as audio, you can export it as notation, and you can just save it as a uh, O Generator file for using later. And then, again, as I said earlier, uh, soundtree.com slash online courses is where I will post uh, this presentation, a link to the webinar, because, uh, of course, I've recorded this, uh, and we'll send you that link. Uh, but last but not least, um, if you are interested in purchasing O Generator World Music, we do have plenty in stock at store.soundtree.com. Uh, or you can call your local Soundtree account manager if you need to use a school PO or thinking of making this uh, through your school um, a purchase. It's best to talk to an account manager who can also give you lab pack and site license prices, pricing. But if you're looking for a fantastic resource on world music, and I taught middle school for many years, I would have absolutely loved this title um, because I didn't have any other software resources for world music. So before we go, are there any final questions? Oh, wait, Wendy asked a question. Did those samples export as notation also? Uh, the only what you write in, so if you click in anything, um, Wendy, if you're, you know, you're, it only exports the rhythms. It doesn't export any sound when you export it as notation, only the rhythms. Um, you, if, in order to get the samples, the sound of it, you'd export it as audio. So hopefully that, um, the audio doesn't export, just uh, the rhythms that you click in.
Any final questions before we call it a day? All right, so um, just to give you a little bit of a heads up, and uh, I'm really uh, thrilled to announce this, and I have not, uh, I don't think I've said it on another webinar, I may have. Uh, mark your calendars for Monday, October 11th. Um, Soundtree is uh, going to be announcing at the MENC Music Education Week into uh, next weekend uh, that we are hosting the very first ever online music technology conference. It is completely free to attend. It is four hours of sessions um, by some of the top people in the uh, music education world. It is sponsored by MENC. Uh, Time and ATMI, which is uh, the Association for Technology and Music Instruction. Uh, again, that's Monday, October 11th, and it's going to be held from 12.30 till 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, we are really excited about it. If you're not on our mailing list already, get onto our newsletter list on soundtree.com. Uh, the event is being called Meadows, M-E-T-O-S, 2010 or 2010. And I uh, hope to see you there. But if uh, you don't have any other questions, I, uh, it was wonderful spending time with you. And, again, uh, the cost is completely free. Uh, there is absolutely no cost to attend the conference. And uh, we're really thrilled uh, about the uh, event. And stay tuned for uh, the formal announcement that will come through our newsletter. Any questions before we go? Great. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to end the meeting uh, now, and uh, a little bit later I'll be sending you a link uh, to a recording of the webinar, uh, and I hope that there are no webinars in July and August. We're taking the summer off, summer vacation, um, and in September we have some incredible stuff coming up, so be sure to check back. Uh, we have Dr. T Dr. Tim Latzenheiser and also um, uh, uh, Michael Butera, who's the new executive director of MENC. They'll all be on those uh, uh, webinars uh, starting in September. Thank you all very much, and I hope to see you uh, have a great summer, and I hope to see you um, in the uh, fall. Thanks. Take care.